Hello and welcome back. Back in bonus video number three, we made a few crude beds. So the kind of thing you might find in an Eau Claire or something similar. So uh, so this time, I thought we'd have a go at making something a bit nicer. So something like this, which, uh, which is more suited to a village inn or a barracks or, or anything like that. And as always, there's a link in the description to the PDF file. So let's make a start. Okay then, for the main part of the bed, we'll need to take a piece of foam core that's been cut to a size of 3 quarters of an inch by 1 and 3 eighths. Then we'll take the darker of the two bed sheet textures and cut out enough of that to wrap around the foam core. But as you can see, before we glue it in place, we're first going to scrunch it up and unfold it several times, uh, just to make it more malleable. Then we'll apply some glue to the back and, uh, and place the foam core in the centre. But uh, before gluing the sides down, we're going to kind of squeeze the paper together in a few places, like you can see here, um, to make it look like the sheet has a few wrinkles and creases and that kind of thing. So once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and cover the rest of the foam core in the usual fashion, uh, adding a few more creases to the sides as we go, and we should end up with something that looks like this. So yeah, that's the first part done. Okay then, for the headboard and the footboard, we'll be using some thin corrugated cardboard. And from that, we'll cut one strip that's 5 eighths of an inch wide, and a second one that's 3 eighths. Then we'll need to cut out enough of the wood texture to wrap around those pieces, and then glue those in place. Though, as you can see, the aim is to have the wood grain running across the width of the strip, rather than top to bottom. So, here I am just finishing off the second one. And then, once they've dried, we'll cut out a piece from each that's three quarters of an inch long. Um, so these are essentially the same width as the bed itself. And while we're at it, we'll also glue some of the same texture around a couple of toothpicks, from which we'll cut two pieces that are three quarters of an inch long, and then a couple more at a half inch each. Right then, once we've got all those cut to size, we'll take the longer of the two cardboard pieces, apply the tiniest line of hot glue along one of the exposed edges, and then glue one of the longer toothpicks in place, uh, doing our best to have it overhang an equal amount on either side. Then we'll do the same thing for the other exposed edge, and when we're done, we should end up with something like this. And if you hadn't already guessed, we'll also do the exact same thing with the smaller piece. Okay, next we'll go back to the foam core piece, apply a line of hot glue to one of the ends, and then glue the footboard i.e. the smaller of the two wooden pieces that we just made, uh, glue that as central as possible. So there you go, something like that. Then we'll do a similar thing for the other end, but this time we'll turn the bed upside down and make sure that this headboard piece overhangs by the same amount. So I'll just hold those in place while the glue dries, and, uh, and there you have it, that's the basic structure finished. However, before we go any further, I, uh, I personally like to add a bit of texture to the area where the blanket's going to be, um, just so that it doesn't sit entirely flat. And, uh, and so here I am applying some hot glue to that area and down the sides. And then I'll just smear that around with a toothpick to, to burst any air bubbles and, uh, and also to make it look a bit more like bumps and folds. And with any luck, we should end up with something that looks like this. And as you can see, it's important that we only do this to the bottom two thirds. Okay, for the blanket itself, we're going to print out the blanket texture on one side of a sheet of paper, and the sheet texture on the other, so that when we cut out our blanket shape, it should look something like this. And in this instance, it's one and a half inches by one and three eighths, which is basically enough to cover the entire bed from top to bottom, as well as leaving a slight overhang on either side when we fold those sides over. But before we glue that in place, we're going to scrunch it up a few times, just like we did previously, and, uh, and then we'll fold the one end over, so that it kind of looks like there's a sheet underneath the blanket that's been folded over, and, uh, and then we'll apply some glue to the back. Then all we'll need to do is glue that into place, and, uh, and we can also squeeze the paper together in a few areas, just like we did with the bottom sheet, um, to add a few folds and creases here and there. So I'll just speed this part up while I do that to the top, 
and along both of the sides. And, uh, and when we're done, we should end up with something that looks like this. Though I should point out that we don't want to fold the blanket under the bed, we, we actually want to leave it hanging freely. Okay, the last thing we'll need to add is a pillow. And for this, we'll need both a scrap piece of paper and some of the lighter sheet texture that have both been cut into a roughly one and a half inch square. Then we'll scrunch up the textured paper in the normal fashion and, uh, and we'll also do a similar thing with the scrap paper but this time we want to squash it together when we're finished so that it forms a kind of bean shape. Next we'll apply some glue to the back of the texture and totally wrap that around the other piece. Um, it's essentially the same method as we used for the sacks in episode 3. Anyway, before it's fully dry we'll cut away some of the excess texture so that it looks something like this. And because it's still a little malleable at this point, we can squash and bend it into a more natural shape and also kind of press down onto the table so that the bottom sits reasonably flat. And all that's left to do then is apply some hot glue to the bottom of the pillow and glue it in place. And there you have it. There's the finished bed. And uh, I have to admit that I'm quite pleased with the way that these have turned out, so, uh, so hopefully you'll like them as well. Anyway, here's a picture of those beds alongside some of the other stuff I've been making recently. And, uh, and you might also notice that there's a bunk bed in there. And when making this one, I simply assembled the two beds first and then glued on all the wooden bits at the very end. Um, the measurements for which you can see on the screen right now. So that's it for this one. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.